In this video we're going to look at how to tie different types of wing. The wing seems to be the most prominent part of the fly when you see them on the water. Um, but there are various techniques and various items you can use to make the wing. Traditionally the wings are made from feather slips. Uh, dry flies and wet flies were somewhat similar but different and the approach to them was different as well. So let's have a look at the feather wings that were prominent many many years ago. Simply take a bed of silk with, with the first one we will do will be a wet fly such things as March browns and flies of that ilk the wing is simply made from two slips of the feather. It's important that you get feathers from different sides of the bird. So you want a feather from the left wing and a feather from the right wing. If you take them so whereby the shiny side is on the outside then what you will end up with is a feather as such. On a wet fly, the wing is the last thing that you'll tie in. So you've tied in all the body and the tails and the hackle and you'll finish off with the wing. And this one we'll tie in the classic fashion. Simply place the wing on top of the hook. The length is entirely up to you as to how long the wing should be. We'll take ours there. Pinch very firmly, finger and thumb, over the top. Pinch with the finger and thumb underneath finger and thumb and then gradually just tighten your thread pinch and, pinch and loop three or four turns like so and there's your wing tied in now as it's a wet fly now all you would do would simply be to cut off the scrap and tie your whip finish and varnish as is necessary. Now that's the classic way to tie your wet wing for a wet fly. For a dry fly you're the other way around entirely. Everything goes the other way. So in this one you've got the two shiny sides of the feather come together and on the dry fly the wing is the first thing you put on. And what happens is, you'll see that the way we've orientated the feather is that they will now split naturally the natural curvature of the feathers. Thing. So we then take our feather and in this instance the feather goes over the eye of the hook. Same technique, pinch and loop. Pinch up pinch down, tighten, pinch up, pinch down and tighten, tighten into place and each turn will go towards the bend of the hook and come back up towards the base of the feather like so and there we have our wing in place. We take our dubbing needle we can then split the two wings apart like so and there's your split wing when you start off don't use too much feather the more feather, the thicker the, the feather, the more difficult it will be. So there's your dry fly, and then all you need to do now is this can form the basis of your body, and then you can proceed along and tie your fly in the normal fashion. Another type of wing be a hackle tip. 
In this case we've got a grizzle. The best example of this would be an Adams. You only need to take two hackles, the shiny side to each other, so you get the, a curvature again so that they will split, they will divide. Simply peel back the fibres like so. We expose a little bit of the stem. Tie them in on the top of your hook. Make sure they sit nicely on the top. Come underneath like so. And there your wings are sitting on the top. Again, the natural curvature of the feather will separate them and they will stay in separate. Again, your, hack, your stems will form the basis of your body and then you will go on and proceed to tie the fly in a normal fashion. Another type of wing that we can tie involves the breast feather from either a mallard or a teal or some duck of some description. And again, we need the feather and a handy additive would be to have either a drinking straw or a piece of fine rubber tubing. This will just help you to create the, the feather so much better. The first one we're going to tie is a fly as a wing as a wing as a wonder wing. The wonder wing is usually best used on flies such as stone flies. Take our bed of silk again it's usually tied in towards the end of the fly. We would tie the body and the rib and whatever and then we would tie the wing and finally tie the hackle on, on this particular type of fly. So what we do is, is we take our wing tip like so, moisten the wing tip so that the fibers come together, put the fibers down through the tube like so yeah, push through keep pushing through until the feather comes out the other end then simply draw through And now we've come to what will be the wing itself. So there's, that's going to be our wing. And for a stone fly, the best thing is simply just to tie that on the top of the shank of the hook, tie it down firmly into place. We can then cut the this was the scrap. Draw the feather through like so. Tie firmly into place. And there's our wonder wing tied like so. The wing itself is very fragile and will not stand a great deal of ill treatment by the trout. One of the things to give you a bit extra st strength and support would be to give it a very fine coat of varnish and the best type is to get some varnish and thin it down with some thinners and some, try and coat the fibres with the varnish and let it dry and that will give you some extra strength. Another type of wing using your breast feather again is an origami wing and then simply take your feather tip as we did before 
and take all of the fibers from one side all of the way down right at the very bottom we don't need them on at all take the, uh, the side of the feather and peel back some of those fibers exposing the stem so that we end up with something like so. The next thing to do would be to grip the feather and bend the stem over the top like so. Hold it right across. Till we end up with something that looks a bit like that. Then simply tie that into the shank of the hook. Again a pinch and loop. Scrap. Stand the wing up. Tie it, flash it into place. Again, it's not a particularly robust fly. A drop of varnish at the base of the feather will give you some support and again some varnish on the veins of the fly. You do have the extra support that you've got the hackle stem on the outside. So this gives you a little bit of extra strength and longevity. The last fly we'll tie in this series is a wally wing. And in this instance we'll use a piece of teal feather. Again we can use our piece of tubing to help us to set it up. Simply peel back your fibres, moisten the tip, Put the tip down through the tube. Like so. Draw your fibre through. In this instance, we'll tie our wing over the eye of the hook like so tie it firmly into place lift the feather up come underneath like so there we are and what we need to do now is to take a couple of fibers from each side of the tip so we take a couple of fibers from this side and simply peel it down like so and then we take two fibers from the other side peel it down like so there we are then 
we can snip off what's left of the huckle stem with a scrub those ones up there those ones we can remove from there simply stand our wings up and in this instance we've got two wings virtually identical and that's the wally wing we can then go on and finish off our fly in a usual fashion there are three different ways of using the breast feather to give you a wing defect you can use other materials to make the wing and tail fibers can be used to good effect in this instance we're going to tie a wing using some squirrel tail fibers we've dyed them yellow so it's easier to see and the most common fly to be used for this would be the grey wolf so you simply take a bunch of squirrel tail fibers snip them off put them in your hair stacker once they're reasonably level you take off all of the fluff from the bottom of the fibre and then simply place on the top of the hook all we need to do now is pinch the loop stand the fibres up like so and come round the base of the fibres these will help to stand the fly, the wing up with the vertical there we are having got that we can then tie the fibres down creating the start of our body come back give it an extra couple of turns to make sure that they stand up nice and true there we have our wing standing up we need to split the wing simply take your dubbing needle divide them into two equal portions and it's simply and firmly into place and then proceed down and there's your grey wolf wings set up like so divided then you can carry on and tie your fly as per the normal so that's using squirrel tail fibres or any tail fibres to make you a wing. Another common wing material we simply deer hair. LK Caddis is the most common fly using this material and you'll simply take a bunch of deer hair you want them in the hair stacker leveled off the tips are all together get rid of the fluff from the base of the feather fibres simply tie your fibres in place and for this take one turn not too tight, second turn, and the third turn comes underneath the fibres, like so, and then around. Then we can tighten up 
by doing that we will not splay the wing so far. We tie that into place now we can firmly tie it down cut off the scrap like so And depending on the angle that you want your fibers to be, you can come underneath the wing, like so, extra couple of turns, and that will lift the wing up to a higher angle. It's entirely up to you as to how far you want them to, to ride up. But, but, and simply trim off this excess here. Leave it a little bit to give you a chance of creating a wake as you drag the fly across the surface. So that's the LK Caddis, and that's using simple deer hair or elk hair. Finally, you can use deer hair to create a different type of wing defect and indeed almost the whole fly. Uh, G and H sedge is a typical example of this. So if we take our tying thread and we have tying thread at the bend of the hook, leave the most of the shank bare. This will help us when we come to do our deer hair once again. Take a punch of deer hair. No need to stack this. We don't need to have the tips together. Simply take the deer hair, tie the hair about the middle, one slack one and one tight one, and the fibers will spin round the shank of the hook. Fold your deer hair back, a couple of turns. Compress the fibers together. Take another bunch of deer hair. Again, tie in the middle. One slack one, then one tight one, and then it will spin round. Once again, compress the fibers together. And so we proceed up the shank of the hook. Pinch it at a time, one slack, one tight, and the fibers will spin round. Compress those fibers. The, the more you can compress the fibers, the better the effect you're going to get with the body. We'll take one more and then we will come short on the shank of the hook. There we are. You take your fibers halfway down the fiber itself, slack one, then a tight one, then spin it round. Proceeding along the shank of the hook as we go. And there we are. Just leave enough room. The eye to tie your finished hackle in your head. It's one more little pinch. And then we should be there. Then spin round. Spin in place. The best thing to do now is the whip finish. And there's no chance of you cutting your thread. Then simply give the whole thing a real good haircut. And 
close to the shank of the hook on the underside you can form your wedge shape like so the whole thing to shape of the final struggling ones there we are And there's your wing, indeed, most of the fly, made out of your deer hair. Cut off the final straggly pieces, trim it up, and there's your deer hair body. This can be the basis of your g and sedge, or indeed most of the carp flies that you wish to tie in dog biscuit fashion.